Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm gonna go over how I manage my strangle positions. So strangles are my go-to position because I can strictly trade on probabilities and not have to pick a direction. The basic idea to make money trading strangles is for the stock to stay in between the short put and short, short call strikes. So strangles are neutral positions in which you're not uh, bullish or not really bearish. Uh, in fact, when you put on this position, um, your de total delta in the position should be zero. Um, so I like to set up one standard deviation strangles. Okay, so let's talk about what one standard deviation is really quickly. Okay, so here's a little explanation of what one standard deviation is and how we're using it. So one standard deviation is basically 68% of the normal distribution. And we're going to look to trade the, the strikes that have 16% probability of being in the money. Or um, if you're just looking at deltas, we could just trade the 16 delta. And so we have a 68% probability that the stock will land um, in between our short strikes. Um, and then if you add them all together, you see that 16 plus 16 plus 68 equals 100, which covers 100% of the distribution. And so basically we're banking that, <clears throat> basically we're banking that uh, implied volatility is going to be overstated. Historically, IV is overstated and that um, the per actual percentage that the stock lands inside one standard deviation is above 80%. And I'll leave a link um, below where I found that study. Okay, so when you trade the strangle, it's a neutral position and your total deltas are gonna be zero. So ideally, if everything was perfect, the stock doesn't move and it states right in the middle, um, that's where you're gonna make the most money. But of course the stock's gonna move. So not every trade is gonna be perfect and the stock could move closer to your short put or your short, short call strikes. And so when that happens, it starts to add more directional risk into your trade. So I'll talk a little bit about that. So if you think of delta as being the number of shares that you have in the stock, the highest delta could be is 100. The highest delta you can have is 100, and the lowest you can have is zero. Um, and then you could have positive 100 or negative 100. As the delta increases, it's like you're adding more shares uh, of stock into your position. If the stock carries momentum, and the delta is keep increasing, the more you're going to lose in the trade. So what we have to do is uh, manage the trade. So we're going to take the side that has lost deltas and we're going to uh, readjust the position so that we can reduce the overall deltas by moving those strikes closer to um, the at the money price. So think of the strikes being two guys playing catch and the ball being the, sh the stock price. So the two guys can keep playing catch as long as the ball stays right in between them. But if one of them throws the ball too hard, then the other guy has to run uh, run back and go get the ball. And so now the two people playing catch are actually farther apart. And to continue playing catch, uh, since you don't want to make one guy throw it farther than he was throwing it before, uh, what the other guy has to do is move closer so that they they have that same dis, that distance between each other again. So to actually adjust the trade, you're gonna close the position that's profitable and then sell a new option closer to at the money to offset the added deltas. And what this ends up doing is it reduces the directional risk of the trade. Okay, so now I wanna go a few, over a few slides and show you um, how I took my strangle on Apple and managed my trade and how the we'll take a look at how the profit range changes and uh, You'll see how as we collect more credit 
our profit targets and um, how much we can make in the trade also changes. So I sold this triangle originally when Apple was at 289 and 80 cents. So the 260 put and the 310 call. Um, so the initial credit I collected was $686. And then the profit range was $253.14 uh, $253 to $316.86. So basically to calculate that, you take the, um, the, the put price and then so since you collected six dollars and 86 cents in total credit um, you subtract you get you can uh, add that as margin and so you basically subtract 260 minus 686 and then to get the upper bound you basically take uh, the call strike and then add 686 so the first roll I made was when Apple was at 300. So this was my first defensive move. Um, and then so I closed the 260 put and then sold the 280 put. And then collected another $321 in credit. So I was able to, to get a total credit of $1,007. Basically from adding 321 to 686. And so now we have a new trade of the 280 put and the 310 call and it's still a strangle and then so now we can uh, calculate our new profit range which would be the same thing as before we take the total credit so we take ten dollars and seven cents and then subtract that for, on the put side and add that on the call side so then apple apple continues to rally um and then went up to 318 so this is my second defensive move in the trade and so now i'm closing the 280 put and i'm rolling up the and then i'm selling the 300 put uh basically rolling up another 20 dollars and here i collected 465 dollars on the trade so now our total credit is 1007 plus 465 1007 was the credit we collected from the first roll and the initial trade and now we're adding the uh, the second roll so now we collected one thousand four hundred seventy two dollars so now I have a new trade of the 300 put and the 310 call so it's a 300 310 strangle and then again to get the profit range we take 300 minus 1472 and then on the call side 310 plus 1472 and so notice how the profit range continues to move along with the uh, current stock price of Apple so I've shifted over that range to basically move along with the strike I'll continue to do this uh, role as long as it's uh, I see as I as long as I need to keep playing defense so what I just showed you is is how you would play defense if the stock were to go up and you would need to roll up your puts now if the stock were to move down then we would need to roll down our calls and it'd be similar except that we the only difference being that we only adjust the call side or the call options the next roll you could do is if your strike goes in the money you may have to bring your puts um, further up and even cross your call strike so then when both your calls and your puts are in the money that's what we call an inverted triangle if you were to go inverted on your strangle you would still be collecting uh, more credit but this time your, your range would de also depend on the difference between the two strikes. So let's say if um, the difference of the strike, if you're, you had an inverted triangle, but the difference of the strikes was $5, then you would have to subtract $500 from the total credit that you collected. Oh, hey, baby. 
Let's say hi. Hey. Hi. Hey. Good boy. Alright, go. And so the last move you could do to roll would be to close your entire position in the current month and then open a new position the next month. That would be rolling called rolling forward and that basically gives you more time to be right and extends the duration of the trade. So there's really no guarantee of where the stock is going to go and sometimes we just have to keep playing defense on the trade and at that point if I feel like I'm just playing defense on the trade then all I'm doing is um, I'm just hoping that I can break even on the trade. So the easiest way to see if to make sure that I break even on the trade is whatever total credit I collected, I wanna make sure that I can buy it back for that same amount. If I collected $1,400 total uh, of credit, if I could buy it back for $1,400, I'll basically scratch the trade. Okay guys, that's all I have for today about managing strangles. Uh, I hope you found that helpful. And if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments section. Uh, I'll be sure to answer them. And if you want to see more videos like this, also let me know and leave a like. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.